quick disclaimer into this series uh, since we were unaware before we started. Um, uh, this is uh, milk outside of a bag of milk outside of a bag of milk, and um, it touches on some sensitive topics. So uh, viewer discretion is advised. Oh, and we're back to this <laughs> title. Uh, milk outside of a bag of milk outside of a bag of milk. Okay. Which is uh, hmm, not what I would have picked for this game genre to be about. No. Or um, should you not? Trigger warning for everybody. This is like all the trigger warnings. All of them. Yeah. We're, we're dealing with some heavy, like, mental illness themed stuff here. Yeah. Uh, possible, possible, like, Drug addictions, possible like depression and suicide. isolation, suicide. Like this game could get really dark. It seems like there's a lot of demons here. There's uh We don't know what's coming. <laughs> it's a lot to unpack. So Definitely. take care of yourselves. Um all right. So last we left off we were uh dinking around with the uh radios the creepy radios please yep. don't touch the radios again i'm not going to that's last episode yeah um all right uh plants for dead this was too tall did Cockroach we touch the toothbrush toothbrush yeah oh, oh no i haven't done i've been kind of going like high to low okay except for the computer i think we just both pointed out like computer is there also this yeah, I'm scared of that. <laughs> yeah, I kind of been holding off on that. I think that's going to push us to the next realm here. So, uh, let's go toothbrush. Oh. Uh, do you need a break? Do you want me to be the voice or do you want to be the uh, uh no, I I think this is working out with you uh reading the the responses that you click. Okay. I turn my eyes toward an inconspicuous shelf near the mirror. There's a glass with a toothbrush sitting on it, and a small towel is hanging nearby. What a wonderful sight. My fireflies are smart and good. They would never get in there. They know about personal hygiene. Okay, well, let's look somewhere else then. Oh, and I apologize in advance. I might be adding or taking away words in my responses. <laughs> I'm Make it your own over there. I was like, I am realizing I am talking almost normal. <laughs> your usual notebook pages, glued to the wall with duct tape. Numbers are drawn on them. It's the only kind of information I can take in without trouble. Uh, dosage and side effects? Yeah. I thought you'd know them by heart. Yeah. Hmm. This is not your handwriting, isn't it? That's a weird phrasing. Yeah. Of course it's not. Shaky, broken lines, ugly numbers. It's not writing. It's more like claw marks. Uh, don't forget to thank your mom. I don't need your advice. My scream makes the pages rustle restlessly. After a moment, the firefly appears from underneath one of them. After looking around in a business-like manner, it takes off into a business-like flight and ends up entering my business-like ear. Hey. Let's continue searching. Look at the mound of pills. It makes me feel dizzy. I don't want to think about it. I don't. What's wrong? I've almost skipped my dose for today. How reckless. I could have died. <laughs> Jesus. Yeah, that's brain not being nice to <laughs> yourself. Yeah, definitely. Hey... Calm down. You've already fixed that. Yes, because you ordered me to. Uh, 
Well, things could have been much worse. Yeah. I heave a deep sigh, come closer, and extend my hand. Wow, it's warm. The moment those words leave my lips, one of the bottles overturns, pills rain down from it, and among and along with them, a firefly. Hooray! After circling above my head a couple times, it finally lands on my palm. The firefly rushes up my arm, and upon reaching my shoulder, crawls straight in my ear. My mind becomes a bit clearer. Oh. We can actually just end whenever we want, it looks like. Uh, I'd, I'd be okay with that. Ending? Uh. Or searching more? Or do you, oh, oh, do you want to find them all? Uh, it's giving us both options. I'm. Let's go for it. Let's, let's try and find them all. Okay. I don't think it'll take that much longer. No, I think there's like one, two, three, four, five, <laughs> six. Then again. Seven. Let's do the notes on the wall. And what are those? Ah, those. Those are the photos of my best memories. But they're blank. I stared at them so intensely that I burned them with my eyes. <laughs> now they're just covering the cracks in the walls. Cracks? Forget it. Are we continuing the search or what? Okay, we are. I doubt it. All of the car apartments are locked. What if... I don't even want to think about what's inside. Who knows what I'll end up imagining. Okay, fair enough. The umbrella emanates a faint sense of coolness. No wonder, it's the only thing that defends me against the thunderclouds that gather under my ceiling. It's such a blessing that it can do it without my help. Still, a firefly won't hide in a place like that. It will catch a cold and be unable to fly. You... You don't want to check it? Why? I'm sure we won't find anything there. This is my sketchbook. Half of its pages are blank, which means it'll still be good for a couple of years. You draw that rarely? Why? Isn't that obvious? If I run out of pages, I'll have to buy a new sketchbook. That is fair. Those <laughs> are not cheap. I can't get to the stationery store on foot. I'll have to take the bus. Do you even realize what kind of nightmare that could turn into? Uh, maybe you could ask your mom to buy you one? Buy what? Ask whom? Can you even form coherent sentences? I think it's ironic that I struggled with that one. <laughs> uh, don't play dumb. Ask your mom to buy you a notebook instead. Instead. So you want me to perform a string of actions, but you're also telling me to do one instead of another. Then how would I decide which action to take? You're so dyslexic. Man, you're a tough case. You lack empathy. Is that my fault? I get closer to the sketchbook, stepping over the wires, the sleeping bag, the cracks in the laminate. And the window's reflection. The sketchbook is lying on the stool. From my height, it seems like the stool is missing two legs. I squat and look again. All the legs are in place. Will I be able to think of an interesting allegory? Oh, let's not go there, okay? I stand up and study the sketchbook from inches away. Its pages are pure whites. 
the last drawing is buried on the previous page, the way it should be. Too bad. I'd love to see it. Maybe next time. A sudden gust of chilly wind breaks into the room and makes the pages rustle. Oh no! I shut my eyes. The distinctive sound of pages turning echoes with headache in, with headache in my head. I know what's going to happen. The rustling has stopped. Even though the wind is still howling from every direction, it can only mean one thing. The notebook is open on the first page. If I wait a little longer, the wind will close it. I won't have to look if I wait a little longer. If I wait. Open your eyes. No. It's okay, just do it. No way, I know you're lying. Calm down. No. Calm down. No. Calm down. No. Calm down. No. Are we gonna do this? This is, I think this is what we're doing. Calm down. Calm down. Calm blue ocean. Calm blue ocean. Calm down. Fine. I open my eyes with utmost caution. The notebook is still open in the middle. No drawings. Nothing. The pages are still pure white. Did I imagine it? I don't know. Did you? You're the smart one here, you tell me. Next time, don't close your eyes. What did you... I couldn't finish speaking because the pages started moving again. Don't close your eyes. Don't make me do it, I'm scared. Trust me. The rustling grows louder, the pages lift up. I can almost see the outlines of drawings on previous pages. No way, everything that is in the past should stay in the past. You couldn't convince me, that's it, I'm closing my eyes. Look, look there. A barely visible light sweeps through the pages. With every new gust, it becomes brighter and brighter. A firefly! The wind immediately stops for a moment. The world sinks into perfect silence. But only for a moment. The buzz that has always been haunting me fills the surroundings. But it doesn't matter now. Goodness gracious, little boy. You made me so scared. The firefly blinks, flies up, and enters my ear, buzzing loudly all the way. It spends some time looking for the perfect spot in my head, then its buzzing dies down. Are you okay? We're running short on time, so let's continue searching. I look down, my school bag worn down and silly, is almost screaming of its own uselessness. From another angle, it looks like a full belly. Its contents are also regurgitating, decomposing, and turning into sticky, into a sticky, mushy substance. Jeez. What a cool image. I need to remember this. Totally not cruel. Uh, tell me what's inside your bag instead. Nothing special. Mostly just all sorts of books. I've taken out all the pens and notebooks out of there. And I'm not interested in anything else. Hmm. You used to go to school, didn't you? Yeah, I did. I had a blast all the way. You sure you understood my question? Do you think everything in my life should be doom and gloom? 
Well, you're wrong. All right, all right. What do you like the most there? Hmm. Well, the rooms were really bright, not like at home. That's it. Don't rush me, let me remember. Well, the beds were also soft and the food was nice. By the way, I attended all the classes. The others always skipped. They probably got told off so hard. I smiled gently, absorbed in warm memories. You never graduated, though. Yeah. Do you remember your last day there? It was a normal day. Dad picked me up earlier than usual. He told me that I'm already too old for the school curriculum. I also realized that some time ago, the tasks were way too easy. Then we got into the car and went home. Mom greeted us there. We had dinner and went to our rooms. And what happened then? I don't remember. And does it even matter? Tell me about it again. Is your memory that bad? Please? Oh, fine. That day Dad picked me up from school earlier explained to me that I need to grow up. It's not like I could completely grasp what he meant. Either way, I didn't resist. We got into the car and went home. Mom greeted us there. We had dinner together and went to our separate rooms. Satisfied? Mm, tell me about it again. Dad dragged me out of school building while I was scratching and biting. The teachers didn't interfere. That scene was ordinary for them. Who knows what the little brat has done. Then he pushed me into the car, and we drove home in complete silence. Mom greeted us there. We had dinner together and went to our separate rooms. God. This is an abuse thing, isn't it? Oh, uh, this is getting bad. Please, let's not discuss this further. <sighs> you Sorry. knew where this was going. Sorry, everyone. I didn't think it was gonna be dad probably beats family at home story. I, do, uh, I don't know no you'll tell me again dad bought milk on our way home oh god again I hate milk so much mom was not home Again, I hate mom so much. What happened next? Suddenly I feel someone's eyes on my back. Knowing that these moments should never ever be ignored, I turn around. But there's nothing there. What happened next? Everything that happened next happened after something that led to everything that happened after what had happened. That made a surprising amount of sense. I look at my bag again, light pouring into the room through the window glints on the metal parts. And there's also a shadow underneath, which means it's real, sadly. Whatever, I don't care anyway. I almost end up kicking the bag in a fit of sudden anger, but I managed to stop myself in the nick of time. If I move it even an inch, the whole picture will collapse, and I'll go blind. It has already happened countless times. What do you mean, you'll go blind? It's like that corn song. Blind. I've spent months memorizing the location of every item in my room. That's why I can see them so clearly and vividly. You won't get it. 
Look at your feet. I look down and see a small insect is crawling toward me from my bag. It's barely glowing, and it can't even fly. I guess this firefly is really tired? I bend down to pick it up. The firefly starts glowing brightly as soon as I touch it, and then flies up. There you go, boy. Good job. After doing a victory lap around the room, it flies toward me with high speed. I shut my eyes, anticipating that the firefly to enter my ear. That's exactly what happens. After it gets inside, it buzzes for a little while, and then goes silent. This one is kind of sad. I wonder why. It doesn't matter. What matters is that it's no longer alone. Sure. Uh, let's continue searching. Two left. Three left. Four left. Uh, I'm not counting that. <laughs> <laughs> Fan it is. <laughs> oh, what's so funny about that? I imagine myself being a firefly that is looking straight at a giant fan. And? I'd be so jealous. The only thing preventing it from flying is a cage it's locked in. And the cable. It's like an inmate, if you think about it. It's so sad. Yeah. Let's continue searching. Ooh. You gotta do that one. The lights? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we'll get to you in a minute. <laughs> no, we won't. Oh, I'm clicking it. As much as I don't want to. Are you serious? What's wrong? Just think about it. Why would fireflies be attracted to light? I think they're quite self-sufficient already in that regard. Well, only if they purposefully want to lower their self-esteem. Hmm. I get close to the waste bin and look inside it with curiosity. Pill packaging, notebook pages, and other garbage. Boring. There's nothing here. Indeed, no self-respecting firefly would hide in a heap of garbage. Can't disagree with you here. <laughs> this is my sleeping bag. It's soft and warm. I'm sure that no living creature would be able to resist the temptation to spend a minute or two inside. They'd want to dig deep into it with a couple of favorite items, close their eyes, and then... Hey, did you fall asleep? Huh? Gently slap my cheeks to return myself to senses. It's already way past midnight. Usually I'd be sleeping like a log at this time, but right now, I can't. Let's continue searching. That's a look of somebody that should be in bed right now. Yeah. 100%. Hey, maybe we'll find something inside. Nah, my thoughts wouldn't have a feature of putting to sleep. Don't have a feature of putting to sleep. Quite the contrary, they always cause insomnia, just like tonight. What? I said searching here is meaningless. Don't you dare click that pile of garbage. <laughs> 
This one? Don't click it. Ha <laughs> ha! Screw you, Tim. <laughs> hmm. I wonder if that's a, uh, I wonder if that's like an achievement type thing. Maybe. Where you, uh, if you click it before this comes up, you get like a, a weird, like that demon thing comes back or something. Oh, maybe. But who knows? I might click this and the demon thing. Like maybe yeah, maybe you have to save it for last. I don't know. Hmm. You found all the fireflies. Amazing. I'm going to say we've. We've found all the fireflies. We're amazing. Mm-hmm. I agree. I guess. I would even hazard as to say you found all the fireflies. All I've been doing is just talking your fucking ear off, or asking <laughs> probing questions, rather. Yeah, well. I'm trying to see if my voice is still too quiet or not. And... <laughs> You're still registering higher than I am. Oh, yeah. And I even moved this closer to me. And um, I'm like talking into it. I think it might be too low for you. I managed to gather my thoughts, but something still worries me. On the other hand, I wasn't supposed to be happy anyway. Why not? If I lose something and then find it, it's just going back to the starting point. No changes at all. Changes at all. Zero sum. And happiness is always about being positive, right? You shouldn't think too much. It hurts you. I want to sleep. How about you get some fresh air before sleeping? What do you mean? Well, go to the balcony, breathe in some fresh air. Somehow those words triggered a panic attack in me. I subconsciously step away from the balcony. I... <laughs> like, I tried to help. <laughs> yeah, you did. I don't think it's a good idea. Why? I know why. This may sound silly, but... Afraid of heights or want to jump? Oh. I feel I, like someone is. Oh, maybe not. I feel like someone is watching me. Uh, that's a social anxiety thing again. A little maybe. bit of paranoia. Yeah. <laughs> that bottom one's just so mean. Right? All right. Let's stay here. Yeah. What are you going to do? What's with this silly question? I'm going to sleep, of course. Hoping that tomorrow will only come after a year or a decade. Imagining myself to be outside of my moral shell, but at the same time still being me. Ridiculous, like milk outside of a bag of milk. And yet... And yet... You don't have to talk out loud for me to understand that you're worried about me. I know that already. I also know that our time is running short. You won't take another pill? Of course not. In fact, I won't take it tomorrow either. And the day after tomorrow. And never ever. That's a goodbye, then? No. I have one more small favor to ask. A really, really small one. What is it? I've blurted out way too much today. A lot of stuff I'd want to forget forever. I don't blame you, but was it really necessary? You'll see tomorrow. No, I won't be able to sleep like this. Fine. What's the favor? I, um... I nervously scratch my wrists and bite on my lower lip. Wait a minute. 
You're afraid to tell me? Yes. I'm also scared that something bad might happen if I tell you. I'm also scared that when something bad happens, something way worse will happen. Stop. I get it already. Still, I won't leave you alone until you tell me. Bully. No, you. <laughs> no, you. No, you. I crawl into my sleeping bag. The lower part of the room is very cold. I hurry to wrap myself in blankets, even though the electric heater is working hard to keep me warm. I'm sad because the dreams just won't come anymore. You won't believe me if I tell you how I dealt with it at first. Of course I'll believe you. I know, it was a joke. Well, anyway, I washed my face, brushed my teeth, lied down, and started imagining that I'm watching a dream. I didn't sleep at all, of course, and always looked sleepy in the morning. After a week of insomnia, I started feeling weird and seeing things. Letters floating in the air, strange silhouettes that appeared in the most unexpected of places, bulging eyes with trembling pale pupils. It was scary, you know? Yeah. Then one day I almost died. I just collapsed in the middle of the room and couldn't move for a while. And then silhouettes, letters, and eyes were hanging over me and hissing. It was horrible. And well-deserved, I guess? It felt like I was caught in the biggest lie in the world. Yes, it felt exactly like that. After that, I stopped. But the silhouettes, letters, and eyes stayed here. I guess they liked this place. They always follow in my wake, peeping at me. I'm kind of scared of them. I can't even argue with them. But today... Today... Well... I... Still too scared to tell me? Of course. They're still listening, you know? Use your hands. Alright. I start chaotically twirling my fingers with enthusiasm, forming complex shapes. You want me to... Tell you a bedtime story? Shh. I was not trying so hard here. Don't you get it? They'll hear you. Relax. Nobody can hear you. So what do you say? I'd be happy to, but I have no idea how to tell them. Oh, that's incredibly easy. Just talk about something without stopping. Sounds silly. It's not, though. And meaningless. You don't know what you're talking about. I know enough to realize that we'll just end up wasting time. Let's focus on something actually important. Boring. Fine. Close your eyes. Oh, God. Oh, go ahead. Let's sit up a little more for this one. <laughs> I wake up on a wooden bench. In front of me lies a narrow, dimly lit alley. An awfully familiar road. Where could I have seen it? Finally. I've entered Mario World. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. I hear a voice coming from the side. I turn around and see a boy with a weird expression on his face. You're late. Um, who are you? 
The boy blinks in bewilderment. We're not going anywhere like this. Try again. Then he takes a very deep breath. You are late. I stare at him confused. He stares back, also confused. Sorry? The boy nods, satisfied. See? Much better. Do you have a name? My name's Tresca. The voice is killing me right now. Thanks. <laughs> I give the Brad and, and excuse me. I give the Brad an evaluating look. He's so young, yet already coming at me with questions like that. None of your business. And besides, will anyone tell me what I'm doing here? Hey, that's rude. It's not like there's somebody else here besides me. Oh, fuck you. Roundhouse kick this kid in the face. <sighs> Haven't they told you anything? I know all there is to know for one. About what? You're obligated to escort me to the store. Oh, this must be social anxiety. <laughs> Tresca says, and that strikes a victory pose. No way I'm doing that. You do understand that refusal is futile. Well, aren't you full of yourself? I'm serious. I'm not the one who decided that. Do you think I'm delighted with your company? He's weird. Constantly shifting between happiness, sadness, loudness, and silence. He's a wacko, and his name is stupid. Are we going, or what? You can go, and I need to think. I'd be happy to, but I don't know the way. Tresca puts on a cunning smile. I bite my lower lip in frustration. I'll be honest with you, I don't like you. He simply bursts out laughing in reply. I do like you, though. And he grabs my hand without hesitation. I don't even have time to retort. Lead the way. I see no hand holding here. Our trip to the store went fine, if not for the fact that Tresco was walking way faster than me. And, on the other hand, at times he stopped, abruptly, and went backwards, studying the ground underneath his feet. In the end, the trip a lot, took a lot longer than it should. After reaching the store's doors, we are greeted by a sign. Uh, we're closing in 20 minutes. Who had the bright idea to indicate their working hours in this way? They probably have special staff for this. Someone who runs the, to change the sign every five minutes. <laughs> it's convenient. Are you joking? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> You're so annoying. It's much better than being boring. How old are you, by the way? None of your business. <laughs> What's her name? What is this kid? <laughs> Uh, none of your business. I was ready to slap the living hell out of the brat, but a scary looking man suddenly appeared behind the glass. He's holding a cardboard sign that says, we're closing in 15 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go. What are you waiting for? Huh? Oh, yeah. After another round of going across the long row of canned products, we realize that we're lost. I can't believe you don't know where they sell milk. I... um... Maybe we should ask somebody for directions? Sure. Hey, wait up! Oh wait, I think we're backwards. Are we? Tresca lets go of my hand and walks confidently towards one of the few store's customers. That person is standing with her back to us, studying something on the shelf. 
I think that is you. Hello, me, can I? I can't hear neither for the second part of his question, nor the reply he gets, but my good-for-nothing friend squeezes... Oh, sorry, squeezes. <laughs> friend freezes in place. Looking the customer straight in the eye, I hurry towards them. <laughs> Jesus. Is he yours? The customer talks to me. He speaks with disgust while wearing a scornful expression. Unfortunately, yeah, oh god. I, um... If he's yours, please get him away from me. He, yes, I'm sorry. I grab Truska's hand and lead him away. He's still looking at the customer, his mouth ajar, his eyes popped. He's also shaking. Only when we turn around the corner, Truska calms down. What was that? I... I got so scared. He said... What? No... Not again. Suddenly, Truska starts screaming like crazy. I cover his mouth with my hand. His face is burning. He's crying. Can you act normal? You you don't understand. Of course I don't. I don't understand anything. Knowing other people is still wrong, though. This is something that you don't understand, it seems. You're mean. Who? Me? Tresca pushes me away and runs off. Drat. At the edge of my vision, I see the source staff hang a new sign on the door. Closing in ten minutes. There you are. I meet Tresca at the cash register. Before that, I managed to visit the milk department after finding out where it was. Hey, you, move. I hear an angry voice coming from a, the other side of a long queue that has formed after Tresca. I squeeze through toward him. What happened? The boy doesn't respond. He just looks at his feet and sniffs. The cashier towers over him. There's a bag of milk lying between them. Is he yours? Yes. Just leave him home next time. People in the queue nod in agreement. Uh, pay for the goods, please. Uh, yes, of course. And the waiting fee. What? You heard me. I did, but that's unheard of. Tresca starts giggling all of a sudden. <laughs> and the f oh god. <laughs> and for the fact that your son's a retard, too. Oh, jeez. But, but... You heard me. You know what? In a fit of rage, I throw a banknote at... <laughs> Dude. In a fit of rage, I throw a banknote to the cashier, a much higher value than needed, even counting it on all the stupid fees. I then grab the bag of milk and turn around on my heels. We're leaving, Tresca. It's dream money anyway. All right. We spend the whole trip back in silence. At some point, we end up turning right towards a gas station. There, Tresca finally breaks his silence. Do you like ice cream? No. Okay. I look at the boy's face. A light flickers in his eyes for a brief moment and then goes out. You know... He turns away from the path and walks straight toward the highway with determination. I stare at his back, confused. Sorry, I think that was your line. It seems like you're not helping me at all. Is your neck okay? <laughs> A new playful light flickers in Tresca's eyes.
This has been milk outside of a bag of milk outside of a bag of milk. We got an achievement for that, but we couldn't read it. Uh, like I, it was. I assume it was like, oh, was it all garbled? Yeah. Um. <sighs> lot to unpack there. I need a minute. <laughs> yeah. all the games we choose to like actually narrate and like read the story it's this one it's this one yeah straight to the just, end just just happened to choose to like on a whim just chose to narrate it and holy shit yeah what a ride ugh yeah ugh yeah. It says the main story is 54 minutes. Main plus sides is an hour and a half. Completionist run is two and a half hours. Average is two hours of play. Yeah, I think what we did, we did that was like an hour and a half. Yeah, hour 45 is what I'm looking at. Hour 45? Yeah. Whew. Yeah, of, of all things to jump on, although the narration and reading was quite delightful <laughs> to do. This is definitely a new oh. change for us, for sure. Uh, Yeah. Less on the playing and more on the talking. Maybe um, lighter subject next time. Um, yeah, like I, I don't like the the one game that I had planned for us is also a narration story. But I think it's gonna be kind of like this game, so like might have to hold off like for another weekend for it. <laughs> I need something lighthearted, or I'm gonna like not sleep well. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I guess, um... I'm pounding soda to calm my nerves. <laughs> I guess let us know what you kids think, uh, I guess, of the game and us narrating it. And if you Oh, yeah, more. tell us if you liked it or hated it. Like, uh, don't want, don't want to bug you. Like, I, I don't know, I felt if, like, like, we hadn't narrated this, we shouldn't have played this game. <laughs> Yeah, like, there was no room to like make jokes in this game. No, uh, I may have made one in the first hour playthrough, and even then, we both looked at each other and went, "Probably not." <laughs> no, it's like um, we would just came off as like total a holes. Well, either way, um, this was still a fun playthrough. I liked it. I so. did too. I was expecting not to, to be honest. Either way, signing off. You kids have fun. Take care of yourselves. It's important. Yes. Take care of yourself.